Welcome to the show. I'm Rob, and this is the show, and this is a recorder. Probably one of the most despised instruments by elementary school kids, and especially their long-suffering parents and their brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and grandparents and uh, family pets. But, you know, if we replaced the recorder with violins, then we would be despising the violin equally. But you're saying the violin is a superior instrument. Masterpieces have been written for it. Now that's true, but normally it just sounds like this. So you see, it's not the instrument, it's really the player. And same goes with the recorder, because check this out. Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. <laughs> Man, I want to play recorder just so I can play that last tune. That was Sarah Jeffrey, and she's a professional recorder player. So uh, check out her uh, channel in the link below and uh, see if she might change her mind about this little instrument. She changed my mind. Um, so I've been playing for about a week. Let's see how I do. I feel like I'm about seven, about to give my first recital. You know, and of course, if I'm seven, then the pants are hiking up. The pants are hiking up, man. The pants are hiking up. Okay, let's see how I do. Well, I think one thing we learned, I'm a terrible recorder player. But I've been playing for a week, so if I keep at it, I'll be okay too. And so can you. Anyways, enjoy the show. You may know me, you may not, but tell me this. Feeling tired after a gig? Hand cramping during those long presto passages? Or maybe the tuba is finally getting just too heavy? If you're looking for technical solutions, I have no musical talent, but what I do have is a particular set of skills. A set of skills that I've acquired over a very long career. I went to Juilliard, and then I became an occupational therapist with a specialization in music. And so here I am, and I'd like to offer you some solutions for musicians just like yourself. And I always like to start off with our main course, which is called Piano to Forte. It's the eight-week program that will test your limits, and you will truly go from piano to forte. And then you can graduate to single note harmony, and you can try out rock hard arpeggios. This ain't no hounding. You will sweat. And there's always some musical therapy that we always like to have, and you could try our bestseller. Surviving in you, a 10-step survival program. Step number four will truly amaze you. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, okay, Boomer, but DVDs are dead. Now this is true, but I produced these bad boys over five years ago and I've got 10,000 copies in my basement. So, if you sign up now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you, and I will find you, and I will make you buy these damn DVDs. Did I ever tell you about my first time that I went to Fan Expo? I mean, we can always use more fans. My Renaissance Quartet is always looking for new converts. We uh, specialize in 16th century funeral music. Our concerts are totes fun, and afterwards we jam. In August, the big one. 
Dirge Fest. So when I went to the expo, I was so surprised to see so many fans playing dress up. I mean, there was red ones and green ones and yellow ones, all flavor of fan. And I surprisingly enjoyed it immensely. I came home with four fans, a Sailor Moon, a Captain Kirk, and two Ewoks. I have them in my basement right now. Every night I give them a free cello concert. A little bit of Bach, a little Thunderstruck, a little cello, hello, hello. They're a very captive audience. And now a bassoonist acquaintance of mine is looking to buy the Sailor Moon, and I'm trying to see if he'll take the Captain Kirk for free. Because seriously, if I leave Captain Kirk alone with those two Ewoks, he'll totally me to them. I'm not a total monster. Good evening, I'm Ian Handsome Man, and this is This Day in Music History with me and Ned... Ned... Where's, where's Ned? I don't... Ned, Ned, Ned you're, you're, you're late. Yeah, okay. What? I was arguing with idiots on the internet. <laughs> what else was I going to be doing? Wear your anchorman clothes. Yeah, well, I'm not the anchor you are, so, like, what does it matter? I'm just going to be out on the street soon enough doing the roving thing, and uh, you'll be in here. Yes. Be in the anchor. Okay, so... I don't know why. This day in music history, uh... Yeah. Ned, 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 you. This day in music history, May 15th, 1704, the Boston Newsletter publishes the first one ad for musicians. It's placed by a local saloon who's looking for a fife and drum unit that is willing to be paid in exposure. Not much has changed. Oh, not much. Mm -hmm. This day in music history, May 15th, uh, 1997, Oasis becomes the first big artist to sue with their fans over the internet. Do you think our fans will ever sue us or big companies <laughs> sue us? No, we don't matter. We have like what? We're like 50 subscribers. Just, pff, why? Okay, uh, this day in music uh, history, uh, May 15th, 1986. Run DNC releases Raisin Hell. Remember that, Ian? Oh man, take us back, man. It's tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. So tricky. Yeah. Walk this way. Talk this way. Yeah, walk this way. Talk this way. Just, Just give me a kiss. kiss. Like, like this. <laughs> oh, that's good. This day in music history, uh, May 15th, 1953, Mike O'Field, the creator of Tubular Bells, is born. Tubular Bells becomes the seminal album from the horror movie The Exorcist. Man, that movie, I couldn't watch it because it, the music, the, that music was terrifying. Man. It was you mean terrifying. This, this music right here? Stop it, okay? Stop it! Why are you the anchor? It makes, makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. You know, and I've been hanging around here, stuck inside, and the only thing I'm doing is, I think it's the only thing I'm doing is going crazy, man. It's the only thing I'm doing. What do you mean we're doing the music news? It's a, it's a sacred duty. There is no music news. There's no music news, man. Give it up. Oh, man. I was just, you know, once I'd like to sit on a park bench, you know, go to my favorite restaurant, get a haircut, you know. Okay, Karen. Did you just call me Karen? Would you? Well, that's the show. Now to leave you with a little willy. The man that has no music within himself, nor is not moved by concord of sweet sounds, is fit for trees and stratagems and spoils. The motion of his spirit is dull as night, and his affections dark as Erebus. Let no such man be trusted. Mark the music. Take care, everybody.